All right, so in this video, I'm going to walk through the process for developing the program uh, called RAM. Uh, well, sometimes I call it Rex rectangles. So we're going to get our calculators out and go to Program and select New. So create new and call it RAM, R-A-M. And one additional RAM. All right, so some of these functions are a little different than what we're what we've been working on, so just want to be careful. But if you follow the process, it should be pretty straightforward. So the first thing I want to do is I want to delete whatever is in Y1 in my um, in my graphing uh, menu. So to do that, I have to go to Delvar, which is in the catalog. So second zero. Go down to the D section and see the alpha lock is on. So I'm going to hit the D button and that's going to bring me right down into that area. And you can see we have Del Bar. So I hit enter. Now I want Y1. Y1 is in the alpha trace menu. So alpha trace Y1. And this is for TI-84. So TI-83, you got to do something different. That's uh, VARs, Y VARs function followed by Y1. And then you hit enter and it would come up. I don't need two of them, so I'm going to wipe out that second one. I want to input. Input's in program. Input output menu. We have input. I want the user to input some equation for Y1. So I'm going to hit quotes to input a string. You see quotes here is in green, so I need to do alpha plus. I need my Y1 again, so alpha trace Y1. I would like a question mark, an equal sign, and a question mark. The equals is in the test menu, so second, math, option one, question mark, alpha, negative symbol, close my quotes to indicate the end of the string, and then I want that to be stored in as string one. All right, so comma key, vars, down to the string command, option one. All right, so it's saved as a string in the calculator, so no mathematical meaning to it. But I want it to be converted into an equation. So I'm going to use a string to equation function. So back to the catalog, second zero. It's in the S section, so alpha lock is still on. Hit the S key, which is the LN. And then scroll on down till you find the one that says, well, basically what you see on the screen. String to equation Getting there any day now. Almost there. It's quicker on a handheld. This uh, emulator is kind of slow. String to equation. Overshot the map. There we are. All right. I want string one to become my equation y one. All right. So bars string one turn it into equation y1, so alpha trace y1. So now if I were to run the program, it would ask me, what's my equation? I would type it in. It would think it's a string of just loosely grouped letters, but that last command is going to turn it into an equation and then plug it into y1 so that we can do some stuff with it. All right, next line, I want the calculator to prompt four pieces of information, the a and the b values, this is a um, rectangular approximation on a closed interval. So starting with A, you know, the, the A value and the B value, N would represent the number of rectangles, and T is the type. It's coming in either from the left or from the right. So it's either left rectangular approximation or right rectangular approximation. Long story short, I need all this information in order to run the program properly. So program, I.O., prompt, uh, I'm going to, well, I guess I don't need to lock it. Alpha math for the A, alpha apps for the B, alpha log for the N, and alpha 4 for the T. And again, the, the comma key is its own key, the 7, uh, right above the 7. So hit enter, new line. I want to clear whatever uh, drawing might be in my display, just in case. You never know. So. I'm going to select that function. So draw is second program. So meh. 
Option one, enter. I also want to have a good window. So when I create a window on a closed interval, the A and B values are my X min and X max. So I want the calculator to know that. So alpha math, I'm going to store that sideways arrow get, that comes up if you hit the store key. I want to store that in as the X min value in my window. So if I go to bars, select window, option one, it'll store whatever the A value in is as the X min. I'm going to do the same thing for the B value and the X max. So alpha apps store X min, uh, sorry, X max. Cheese and rice. All right. I also want to have some Y values. I want to have my Y min and Y max. So I'm going to let the calculator figure out what the Y value would be corresponding with the function on the interval. So I'm going to use the F min function, math option six. What this will do is it'll take, if I put alpha trace y1, it'll take my function on the interval with the variable x on the interval of a to b, and it's going to figure out what the minimum value would be on that interval. I'm going to store that in as some dummy variable. I'll call it v. All right, so that's going to give me the x value. I might have misspoke a second ago. It's going to give me the x value associated with the point that has the lowest value for y. So now I actually just need to figure out what the lowest value is for y. So I evaluate the function at that given v value. And that gets stored in as my y min. So store to bring up the sideways arrow, bars, window y min. And I gotta basically do all that again for the max. So math seven y one on the interval of a to b. I missed my x. Okay, so here's a good learning opportunity. If you forget to type something in, you could either delete everything that you you needed to put the thing that you didn't put in in front of. Or you can go back and hit second delete and then type in the thing that's missing. So X, I need another comma, and now I have what I need. Store, so close parent store, we'll, we'll store that in as some other dummy variable, we'll call it W. So then I'm going to evaluate my function Y1 for W, and that's going to get stored in as y max. All right, so now we, we'll have a good window. All right. So that's, I think, the heavy duty part of it. The rest is just, I mean, just making sure your eyes don't get crossed uh, because it's really just typing what you see. So we'll draw F, so second program. It's under uh, it's under draw, so option six. We want to draw f. Draw f. What do you think the f might stand for? Function. Draw function y one. All right. Another way of saying graph it. I want to pause. Pause is one of those weirdly used tools because it's like, why would I ever need this? If I don't hit pause at certain times throughout this program then it's going to breeze through all this code and just get right to the last line. And there might be some stuff I want to see along the way. So hitting the pause function allows me to just kind of stop and smell the roses. All right. So pause. Now I'm going to type this in as exactly as I see it. So B minus A divided by N stored in as H. If you know anything about rectangular approximation, you know that this is the calculation that gives you the delta x, the width of each rectangle, right? The interval divided by the number of rectangles in total, right? So I'm going to take the number 0 and store it in as s. And the number 1 and store it in as j, just because I need some dummy variables, some, some placeholder. I'm going to create label 
Uh, so in program under control, LBL. Uh, I think I might have been better off going the other way. Yeah, option nine. Label one. All right, so this is a uh, kind of an anchor in the program because if I later on say go to one, it'll bring me back to this point within the program. All right, so A plus J minus one times H. Store that in as U. All right, so all this stuff is helping us figure out the area of each individual rectangle. All right. Uh, U plus T times H. Store it in as X. This is a, this the next few lines are code that allows us to generate actual line segments. So this is going to segment the bounded region into the, the rectangles that we're looking for based on these calculations. Okay. So, and when you go through the activity, you can see how this really manifests. So program, oh, I'm sorry, not program, draw, second program. We want line, so option two, u, comma, zero, comma, u, comma y1, alpha trace y1, second program, option two, u, y1, u plus h, comma y1, Fortunately, there's no copy paste, so I'm kind of stuck typing the same, the old-fashioned way. Um, that being said, we're only typing this in the one time, so that we have a fully functioning program that's going to keep us from having to type this in every time. The key, I suppose, is to type it incorrectly the first time. I mean, that's almost a guarantee that I'm going to screw something up just by saying that, but we'll see. All right, S plus H times Y1 stored in as S. All right, so now here's a conditional, and we want to know is But we want the is function. So if this is a true statement, then one thing's going to happen. If it's not, then another thing's going to happen. So uh, program under control, we're looking for the is function. Probably should have gone the other way, but whatever. J comma N. Go to. Go to is in program under control. Go to one. And we're going to pause again. Okay, so program. And I believe it was nine if memory. Oh, no, it wasn't nine. Ah, program. Uh, I don't remember. I suppose I could just look at the top of my screen and see, but I didn't, so here we are. So then we're going to display, so program, option three, I-O, option three. I'll lock it up, second alpha to put the lock on, S-U-M, close it up. Now, this one, it's optional. You can do it as display sum and then display s, or you can do it like this. 
I think this might be nicer. Put a little colon in here, maybe a little space, and then comma s. So you get it all in one line. I mean, it's up to you. It really doesn't matter. But if you do that, it'll say it as a string sum and then what the value s is. All right, so let's test out our program and see if it works. All right, there's, I have stuff written in y1, but you can see it's the equation y equals x. So hold that thought for a second. I'm going to run my RAM program. It's going to ask me for a new function. I'll go something simple like y equals x squared. The a value on the interval of, let's say, 0 to 2 with four rectangles uh, coming in from the left. 0 comes from the left. 1 comes from the right. Just think, 0 is less than 1. 0 is to the left of 1. So from the left is 0, from the right is 1. So it creates a graph. And I have extra stuff in there from a different problem. So let me pause this. Quit. First off, y equals, you see now x squared is my new y1. Let me get rid of this bad boy and do it again. So run the program. Again, x squared. 0 to 2, 4 subintervals, 4 rectangles, coming in from the left. So it's going to, with a, a perfect viewing window, come up with the figure. Then it's going to pause. You see this the little dotted line here? That means it paused. So hit enter. It creates your rectangles, one with no height and then three with some height. Then it pauses again. Then hit enter. And now it gives us the sum. The sum of all of those area rec uh, those rectangular areas would be 1.75. So that would be an underestimate. If you want the overestimate, you do the same thing, but with a t-value of 1. And if you wanted the trapezoidal approximation, you'd find with a t-value of 0, and then a t-value of 1, and then average those two answers. Okay? So pretty cool stuff, I think.